With respect to um, African Americans, uh, tell us a little bit about how my people are able to do some tracing, especially when there's such sparse census data um, prior to 1870. That's something that's important to me because there is so little documentation for most African Americans more than 150 years out. And so one of the things that we've done at Ancestry DNA is we've gone into our big collection. We have a collection of 100,000 DNAs from around the world in the freezer. So we haven't tested all of them, but some of the first ones we went out for testing were all from West Africa. So that is the major source of the original transatlantic slave trade, a bunch of different countries or areas in Western Africa. And so we can look at modern populations in Africa now and help African Americans find out where, or at least who they're related to now in Africa. And it's been great, it's been really, really enormously powerful. And one of the things that I've been able to discover is that most African Americans uh, have ancestors that hail from two or three different parts of Western Africa. But it's mostly Western Africa. Yes, mm -hmm. almost entirely Western Africa, yes. So it turns out that African populations have the most genetic diversity of any population in the world. And in fact, Africa is very complex. So different populations in Africa actually are quite diverse from one another. To give you an example, if you took a population that was living in the Kalahari Desert and compared them to one who was living in, let's say, Mali, they would be as divergent from each other as, say, an Italian population from the Chinese. So there's an incredible amount of what we call population structure across different groups within Africa. And within each of these groups, there's an amazing amount of genetic diversity. So I became really fascinated with this. And just curious, is there like some explanation for this wide range of diversity? Right, so one way to think about the, the origin of modern humans and the history of humans and how that relates to the genetics is to think a little bit about a bowl of jelly beans. So you have a bowl of jelly beans, it has a lot of different flavors, and what happens when humans migrate is that their genetics are actually sort of sampled from their ancestral population. So if you were to take your hand and scoop out some jelly beans, you would get a subset of flavors in the bowl. You wouldn't necessarily sample every single flavor with just one scoop. So the same thing happens with human genetics. If you have a population that splits from its ancestral group, there's a subset of the genetic diversity that moves into the new area. And what happened is humans originated in Africa, and then a subset of individuals moved into the Near East, and then eventually into Europe and Asia and Oceania. But it was only a small subset of ancestors. So the um, estimate is about 1,000 individuals only roughly populated, were the ancestors that populated Europe and Asia from many thousands of people who were living in, in Africa 50,000 years ago. So, so, so the diversity is, a, is indigenous, it is not a result of admixture from the outside? No, that's right. The, the diversity is indigenous in African populations. And they've had a lot of time to move across the African continent and evolve. And um, there's, there's some amazing stories within Africa about human population history. Mm -hmm.